I have a video of a tennis ball being tossed up into the air and coming back down. What I want to know is how far did the tennis ball travel? So I reset the video and I've got it in a computer program so I can have the computer keep track of where the tennis ball is at. And because this is the starting point, I'm going to mark it as the origin. So I've got the track right at the zero point, right where it's starting at. And then I go ahead and run my video again. And we can see that the computer is keeping track of exactly where the tennis ball is on each and every frame. And I can see all the tracks, if I do something here, and there we got it. We know exactly where the tennis ball was at every point in the frame. And so then you say, Mrs. Hedden, this is a silly question. It's easy to tell exactly where the tennis ball was at. All you have to do is go to this starting point, and you've got all the marks made, so you just follow that path all the way to the end point, and then you measure that line. And of course, I did, and that line is 1.37 meters. But consider this. The tennis ball started right here, and it ended right here. So it actually traveled from here to here. And if you measure that line, it's 0.65 meters. So what is it? 1.37 or 0.65? And what's the difference between the two numbers? That's what this video is all about. How do we describe the distance traveled? Well, we have to be aware of vectors and scalars. Vectors and scalars apply to way more than distances. So before we do anything with vectors and scalars, though, we have to talk about coordinate systems very briefly. We always measure in reference to a particular point. In the video, it was where the tennis ball started at. In math, that point is called the origin. In a race, that point would be called the starting line. We use reference points continuously in everyday life, but it's usually inferred. We don't usually say, starting at zero. We just say, oh, it's about two blocks from here. In physics, it's important to be aware of the starting point being used. It's usually inferred, not directly stated, and usually we assume that the starting point is zero. Every once in a while, it's not. You just need to be aware of it, though. Well, once we have a coordinate system, we can say distance is the total path traveled by the object from the starting point to its end point. And then displacement is a measurement between the starting point to its end point. And what the heck is the difference between those two words? Well, let's take a look at our tennis ball again. The distance is the total path traveled. The total path traveled is the red line. That was the 1.3 seven meters. The displacement, displacement is the measurement between the starting point right here and the ending point right there. That would be that 0.65 meters. Why are the numbers different? Well that 0.65 meters includes direction and in direction we had the tennis ball going up as well as coming back down. This up motion was a positive 0.36 meters. And then we had a negative 0.36 meters. So we consider the direction, we would have 0.65 plus 0.36 minus 0.36. 1.37 did not include the direction. So it just added 0.36 plus 0.36. Let's take a look again at what these things mean. Specifically, we're talking about vectors and scalars. Scalars just have a magnitude or a number associated with them. Scalars include things like distance, speed, time, mass, and volume. A vector, on the other hand, is an arrow that indicates the distance and the direction from the reference point, or your origin. A vector has a magnitude, a number, or how big it is, and a direction. Vectors include displacement, 
velocity, acceleration, and force. If we go back and look at that picture, the scalar quantity was going up and down, and we didn't really care that it went up and down. That's called distance. The vector quantity is displacement, and it cared that it went up, and that was a positive direction, and that it went down, and that was a negative direction, and they both canceled. So with a vector, we have 0.65 meters for our total distance, and we would actually have to say it was 0.65 meters to the right, which is generally is called east. So 0.65 meters east. And that would be a vector. And we would use, show that with a D. And the D generally has an arrow over it. And that D means displacement. With direction, or distance, we would just have a D without the arrow over it. And that would be that total distance traveled, or 1.37 meters. There's no direction associated with it. Looking at this, we have just a number or a magnitude. Looking at this, we have a number, which is the magnitude, as well as a direction. And that's really the defining difference between a vector and a scalar. A vector has to have a direction along with it. Let's take a look at a few examples. Five miles per hour. Is there any directions? No. There are units, but no directions. So it's a scalar. 5 miles per hour east, that's a vector. 20, 200 seconds, no directions, therefore it's a scalar. 2.6 meters per second per second north, vector. 5.78 kilograms, scalar. 315 milliliters, scalar. 3.26 newtons at 38 degrees, that 38 degrees constitutes a direction, therefore it is a vector. So that's your first exposure to vectors and scalars. Distance is a scalar. Displacement is a vector.